Mountain bike training shouldn't be restricted only to what's on a what bike and sagittal movements. Try this split leg ski hop where I'm traveling over a one meter target to replicate some of the demands of big berms and the agility needed to be a better mountain biker. We all know interval training is brilliant for mountain bike training, but don't restrict yourself to just pedal intervals. Pumping is a way better skill for mountain biking descending than actual pedal power. So here's how you can do some intervals to get better on the mountain bike. So the interval on a pump track is reasonably simple. You can time the number of laps. So maybe you could do three laps and then rest one for one. Or you can have a heart rate monitor on and say do five laps and then rest until your heart rate gets back down to 120. But here's a brilliant tip. Most jump bikes are set up for everybody. So you need one jump bike between two or three people and take it in turns to blast around, swapping the bike each time. And there you have a competitive interval training session on the pump track that'll help you on your mountain bike. Mountain biking demands so much of your core strength and other parts of your body, linking them together. So why just train a row without core? Try this bird dog row for 12 to 15 reps each side and get the benefits of trunk training, but also pulling to handle on the bike. Mountain biking demands quite a lot of the pumping action particularly on enduro trails. So at the pump track where we can practice that loads. However, like any training, we want additional stress to be able to get additional gain. So the pump track, we might do a few thousand pumps, but that's not necessarily the best way to get a strong pump. And to make a good physiological change, we're gonna do fewer reps, more load of that exact position that you're pumping through. This way, we're gonna build more power than a few thousand reps. And we're gonna look at maybe 100, 150 total under higher load. Get more muscle recruitment and physiological change. That's what we need to be better whilst we're training for mountain biking. Training for mountain biking doesn't always start with strength, absolute strength, or mobility and functional movement. There's somewhere in the middle where we can start training to just be a better athlete. So a Cossack squat has great benefits, of mobility in the hip, but obviously strength. And we can twin that with an upright row on one side to get super benefits throughout the body of control, strength, and mobility, all the things to help you be a better mountain biker. Training for mountain biking doesn't have to be hard grind all of the time. There's nothing I like more than to come to a trail center to do my zone two on an e-bike. But don't restrict yourself to junk miles in zone three. This is how you do it. So on any good capacity training ride, the sweet spots of zone training, two and four or above. Three is what we call junk miles. So a trail center on a training day on an e-bike, don't be in zone three all the way around. Instead, suck up your ego, stick it in boost, do an hour or an hour and a half, and then hit that other sweet spot by turning it off and finishing the session with 10 sets of 30 second sprint, 30 second rest. Oh, it's gonna be painful, but all the gains for mountain bike riding. We know that mountain biking demands so much strength and control that simple movements often just don't cut it. It's good to have a strength base, but add bands for instability onto single leg hinges like so, and it more replicates the demands you'll experience on the bike going down some super gnarly downhill. Mix it up, be a better rider. Inherently, mountain biking has the risk when you come off of concussion and head injuries. Neck training for elite riders is almost essential to negate that danger. You can invest in something like this, the iron neck, or you can do pretty much a similar training with just a band. 
think more left to right than forward and back in a lunge position. Isometric holds. Count 20 to 30 seconds. Whoa. Repeat on the other side. Get a strong neck and don't get brain f <laughs> Time to main training for mountain biking. Try this Renegade Road Challenge to get better at riding downhill. One press up, one row. A press up and a row the other side is one rep. How many can you do in a four minute window with 15 kilo dumbbells? Comment below with the weight of the dumbbells and the total number of reps and the winner will get a Fit for Racing t-shirt. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Try this double under challenge if you're a mountain biker and you want to increase your ankle mobility, strength, calves, shoulders, and lots of things that help you be a mountain biker. Set a timer, do as many as you can in 10 minutes. If you get to a thousand, which I know people have done, you're an absolute legend. Mountain biking demands so much control of the hips, not just in the sagittal front and back way that you may train in the gym. As a warm up on the bike or in the gym, Try this four point lunge complex. So we're gonna do a pistol squat out to the front, as far down as you can go and safely come back up. Same leg, Cossack squat, and then leg back into a back step lunge, and then my favorite, a curtsy squat. You do that one time on one leg, repeat on the other, and flow through that five or six times and see how great your hips feel. Hip mobility is super important for mountain bikers. Try this hip flow. Super simple. Six, runner's lunge with a twist before then hitting a walk back, but instead of standing, you're gonna grab your toes and pull down into what we call a bootstrap stretch. You're gonna stand with your legs straight, pull down for six reps, then back to the runner's lunge, three times round, and your hips will be ready for the gym or the bike. Any gravity mountain biking demands a high level of ability and strength on upper body, particularly the press, but in different planes. Don't limit yourself just to bench press. Add in dips, weighted if you're a weapon. Otherwise, you can do it unweighted, Dips on rings and TRX add a little bit of instability, which helps muscle engagement. Or scale it down onto static bars for a little bit more stability, a little easier. You can actually do dips between pretty much anything that's at the same height and on a stable platform. If you struggle, it doesn't mean that you can miss out on dips. Add a band or scale down on a machine and keep adding that plane of movement to your training to get a more holistic pressing ability that'll help you on the bike. Gym training for mountain biking should be time efficient to so try this 100 rep free bar warm up. We've done four deadlifts, you're going to do four cleans into four front squats, four presses or push presses, bar onto your back, and four back squats with a twist and knee down. That's one round. Bring the bar back out the front, repeat for five rounds without putting the bar down, and you're goddamn sure that's gonna warm you up for your session.